Good afternoon, and welcome to the commencement exercises of ECPI University's class of 2018. In honor of our great nation and the men and women who made the sacrifice to defend, protect our freedom, allowing us to pursue our own educational and career goals, please remain, please stand as we have the presentation of our colors presented by the Huguenot High School JROTC under the direction of Sergeant Major Branch, retired, followed by the singing of our national anthem sung by our own Cassidy Adams. I respectfully ask all gentlemen, please remove your hats. Please present the colors. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets Didn't know we had that kind of talent at ECPI, did you? Please retire the colors. Please, please be seated.
East Coast Polytechnical Institute, better recognized as ECP ECPI University, has a long-standing tradition of being a career launching pad for those seeking careers in health science, business, criminal justice, and or information technology related fields. Your presence here this evening, this afternoon, tells me that you're familiar with the career success of one of our graduates who is participating in this honorable ceremony. Being ranked amongst the nation's top colleges and universities is something that we're all proud of. To achieve and sustain such a national ranking is a testament to our supporting cast of instructors, career advisors, admission advisors, librarians, and all administrative support staff. At this time, would those people please stand to be recognized? All of our instructors, support staff, Thank you. Thank you for your efforts to help our graduates achieve their goals. Perhaps a, perhaps a little perspective this afternoon is needed for me to get your attention. Let me share some things with you. Twelfth in the nation for the number of associate's degrees graduates in engineering-related technologies. Twenty-fourth in the nation for the number of associate's degrees awarded to African Americans. Fifth in the nation for the number of undergraduate degrees awarded in CIS and support services. Fourth in the country for the number of combined associates and bachelor's degrees in computer science, engineering, technologies awarded to African Americans. Third in the country for the total number of CIS degrees awarded to African Americans. That represents 3% of the total United States. Sixth in the nation for the number of associate's degrees awarded in health science and related studies. That means in a few short years, it'll be very difficult to get health science related support without seeing an ECPI grad giving you that type of service. The most important thing, 85% of our graduates, 85% of our graduates are hired in their career fields. And it goes on and on and on. That's something we should all be very proud of. You realize there's over 4,000 universities and college and public and private colleges and universities in the United States. Our sports team, God bless them, our sports teams will never win a back-to-back -back championship, but there are very few colleges and universities that are better at doing what it is that we do according to uh, uh, Community College Weekly and the Military Times. They recognize ECPI as doing what it was designed to do. Getting ready for the big drop. Life is but a roller coaster. Up one minute and down the next, slams you to the right, then jerks you to the left. Life in that old roller coaster will have you laughing in pain for the enjoyment of it all on one minute and the next crying to get off. Life like that old wooden roller coaster, once it's left the landing pad, it doesn't stop until the journey ends. The question our graduates may now be facing is how will you respond to your life roller coaster? What are you going to do when your life roller coaster starts clinking and climbing its way to the top, preparing for the big drop and the bottom falls out? Will the excitement of the journey cause you to look for a way out? I suggest you simply hang on. Those who can stand the anticipation of the big drop know and understand that without this big drop, the rest of the journey is not possible or likely to be completed. So as you prepare your life's coaster, um, be courageous in the climb, for without the climb, the rest is not possible. Find pleasure in the ride where and when you can, because there will be times you'll be slammed to the right and suddenly jerked to the left. One second you'll be safe on the ground, and the next minute you'll find your feet dangling uh, above your head. <clears throat> I would like to leave you with leave you with three popisms in the life challenge. One, be prepared, be proud of who you are, and be proud of what you're good at. Have civility for your fellow man. Don't follow, don't allow fear to become a factor for you. The mere fact of some things frightens us and can cause us to make bad decisions. If someone yells snake in a bad situation, we could turn around and run into a tree, getting away from a rubber harmless toy. 
Fear can lock us into a place where we can't get out of if we're not constantly growing and moving forward. Comfort is likely to set in, and after too long, we can become complacent and become small in a world that's growing bigger and bigger all around us. Marion Williamson's provide us with this challenge as we move from the classroom into your chosen career fields. She encourages us to keep fear in its proper place. She writes, our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measures. It's our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. Who would he ask? Who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, handsome, talented, or fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of the Most High. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened by you shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are born to manifest the glory of the mighty, the Most High within us. It's not just in some, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. The great Muhammad Ali talked about his own fear in his book, The Soul of a Butterfly. Every man wants to believe in himself and every man wants to be fearless. To become a hero, uh, we stand up for something that we believe in. Before Muhammad Ali became the heavyweight champion of the world, he was just a small kid from Kentucky who had the faith to believe in himself and the courage to, to follow his heart. We're also reminded in the Bible addresses fear over 300 times and encourages us to fear not and to be not afraid. We're wired to go forward with confidence and accomplish great things. Don't allow fear to become a factor for you as you journey towards your greatness, but be of good courage. Have courage to stand alone for the good even when the crowd is standing for evil. Have the courage to be silent when others are making a ruckus. Have the courage to say yes to the right things when others are saying no, or no to the right thing when others are saying yes to the wrong. Have the courage to finish the race when others are quitting all around you. Fear is not a factor for us because we're courageous people ordained to do great things in this season. This is our winning season. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, this is my winning season. Yes, 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 there will be valleys and there will be mountains, peaks along your journey. In, in uh, last week's competition, we were the champs. In this week's competition, we may be the chump. Yesterday, we were the best team out there. No one could touch us. And today, we're struggling to stay in the game. Life is but an old wooden roller coaster. It takes you up one minute and down the next, slings you to the right, and then slings you to the left. On roller coasters, will have you laughing one minute and crying to get off in the next, okay? Like that old wooden roller coaster, once it's left the loading pot, it doesn't stop till the journey's in. Even when your, your stomach falls to the bottom of your feet, it keeps on rolling. Even when the days are filled with things that are least desirable, it keeps on rolling. Even when we find ourselves in the midst of the storm, it keeps on rolling. And even when we find ourselves in those happiest times, it keeps on rolling. Perhaps, perhaps your greatest test will come as your life roller coaster starts clinking its way to the top. What will you do in preparation for your drop? Will you be anticipating that drop of the stomach knowing that it will be a journey to a more pleasant ride? Or will you relish the excitement of the drop? knowing that because of that drop, the ride will be a memorable one. Dr. Martin Luther King's words were recently shared with me by a close friend after a disappointing performance by my dog and I after winning a national championship. You're talking about being on the top one day and then on the bottom the next. I've been there and I'm sure there'll be a lot more valleys and, and hilltops. Dr. King writes, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of confidence, but it, where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. The last challenge I leave you with as you travel your chosen past, remember to show civility, civility for your fellow man. 
I don't think is a word that is practiced much by today's leaders. Perhaps they've forgotten what the word means. Google defines civility as polite, responsible, respectful behavior, polite actions and words. As we live in a world of information explosion where bad news, horrors, reports of evil things that one man is capable of doing to another are all around us, we must make an individual conscious effort to show civility to everyone to make the world a better place. Our world is hurting and crying out for more civility. How much better would the world be if we made a conscious effort to make every situation, every situation, more civil than it was when we walked into it? As I thought about some of the great leaders and sport figures who have passed, their earthly journey has ended, I'm convinced that we honor them and applaud them, not because of the way their journey ended, but because of the impact that they had during their journey. It is my hope that your journey will be a legendary one. Keep the words of Stephen Gellert with you as you travel. I shall pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, I can do, any kindness that I can show to any human being, let me do it now. Let me not defer, let me not neglect it, for I shall pass this way again once. Sure, um, <clears throat> secure all belongings, fasten your seat belts, keep your hands and feet inside the cart, sit back and enjoy the ride. Godspeed, ECPI class of 2018. Good afternoon. It's now my pleasure to introduce you to our valedictorians. As is the case with every graduate here, these individuals have demonstrated many important qualities while they were students at ECPI. Discipline, accountability, positivity, a strong work ethic, resilience, and determination, just to name a few. These are all very admirable traits, and clearly as valedictorians, they also have achieved academic excellence. Their breadth of knowledge in their field is, is certainly impressive. So while they have each outstanding academic records, it does not mean that they did not also at times face trials. They too had to learn to balance the responsibilities of school, work, and family. At times struggled with their classes, got discouraged, or perhaps even questioned whether the sacrifices they were faced with were endurable. However, like for each of you, it is the unique story of how despite all of the obstacles placed in their path, they persevered to be here today as college graduates. That is what is truly remarkable, is their greatest victory, and is what will lead them to continued success. It's truly an honor to introduce these individuals to you today. Our first valedictorian represents the Innsbruck campus, graduating summa cum laude with a Master's of Science in Cybersecurity, Preston Carter. Before I begin, I would like to thank ECPI Innsbruck for selecting me to represent them as a valedictorian, as well as those who state the course throughout life's struggles. My wife, Vicki, was the key to my success, and I'm pretty sure every graduate seated would, in this hall would not be here without the love and support of their family and friends. With everything going on in our personal lives, I know it seems like many of us forget to thank those in our support system. So I thought I would take a moment to try and quantify the feelings we as graduates have on this day and what your being here means to all of us getting ready to receive our diploma in this auditorium. When reflecting on today, you may be thinking about what this moment means to you and the future you envision for yourselves. I know I do. As I stand here remembering the dream of going to college when I was in high school, at that time, it was a faraway dream because of the predicament that I dug myself into when not applying myself to my studies in high school. I had very promising track and field abilities. 
but I lack the self-motivation to get to the finish line of applying myself enough to get into college without being on academic probation. This was a real disappointment to my mother because it meant no scholarships to try and help with the college costs that my family couldn't afford. The other problem I had was that I was tired of school. And if I went to college, I was pretty sure I would fail out because I genuinely didn't want to attend. So with this in mind, I took the long route back to college and went into the US Navy, thereby forging a new path there. That journey lasted for 20 years with many deployments, the death of my mother and father, and meeting my wife. Even through all of this, I still thought about that dream of going back to school and fulfilling that promise to my mother that I would attain not only her lifelong dream for me, but my dream and at least get a bachelor's degree. To make a long story short, that dream was accomplished in December 2015, and I walked in June 2016 in her honor. But two years later, 2018 is different, because this moment is not just about me, but about us. The promise I made to my mom and dad is no different than what many of your parents dreamed of for all of you. After leaving home, what I learned throughout my life, and I hope you have too, is that from the minute you took that first breath, your parents had dreams of what you would accomplish and how you would continue to exemplify the best of them throughout your lifetime. From the time they picked you up and looked into your eyes for the first time, they knew that you would be something special and hoped you would be greater than their wildest dreams. Believe it or not, this dream continued from the time they took you to kindergarten, or Head Start, to the moment that you're sitting in this auditorium getting ready to receive your diploma. You are their living dream. And it makes them realize that all the hours they put into making you who you are was worth every hill and valley to reach this moment. So for this one moment, let them enjoy that joyous reflection as they close their eyes and relive their accomplishment through you to get to this point of success for not only you, but for them. This moment, my fellow graduates, is the eternal love and support of a family that will continue to support you even when the lights go out here and you venture out into the workforce to move upward. There'll be stumbling blocks, but remember that your safety net will always be there to support you through the thick and thin of life. Finally, as I close, I would like to thank, or rather I would like to leave everyone with this quote. Every dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. This quote from Harriet Tubman provides a simple blueprint to how all of us have proceeded through every point in our lives. Believe it or not, it started as a child learning to walk, to ride a bike, and later how to drive. Graduates, all of life's milestones started as dreams of aspiration about what we would accomplish once we attain that goal and how it would impact those around us. Well, with, well, with you having accomplished the goal of graduation, what is, your, what is your next dream? That is what you should be asking yourself when you leave from here because this should not be the end of your dreams. In your eyes, it should be the new beginning. And before you get ready to venture forth today, remember to thank the professors, support staff, and students around you for helping to make the, this your special day. Thank you all for sharing in my journey and continuing to inspire me to reach for my dreams as together we all reach for the stars to change the world. Thank you. Our next valedictorian represents the Moorfield campus, graduating summa cum laude from, uh, with a bachelor's of science degree in electronics engineering technology, Chad Spangler.
Good afternoon. Wow, this is a lot more intimidating than the first day of class introductions. How's everyone doing today? <laughs> Greetings, friends, family, faculty, staff, alumni, and of course, the illustrious class of 2018. <laughs> My name is Chad Spangler, and I'm extremely honored to be here today. As a previous college dropout, I can't tell you how honored I am to be standing here as valedictorian. Now let me first apologize for making you all sit through this long speech. Just know that it will be un uncomfortable for you as it is for me. Now with that said, I'd like to say a uh, few words to the class of 2018. We made it. We are now officially the graduating class of 2018. We've all waited for this moment a very long time. But we would have never made it to this moment without believing in our dream for a better future. And believe we did. Though there are thousands of students graduating today, few of them had to endure what we all did. Working long hours at our day jobs and then putting in the extra effort to come to class for another four and a half hours. Let's give them all a round of applause. There were plenty of things that might have been more enjoyable to do if we weren't having to go to school, but we sacrificed our time and our money because we dreamed of a better future, a better future for ourselves, our families, and our children. Most of us feel relieved that we've come this far and are about to have a ton of free time added back into our lives. Even though the homework will end, I encourage you to keep up with your studies beyond graduation. Remember what it was that made you sign up for school to begin with. The thought of a better life, making more money, and doing something you love. The job market is highly competitive. Whether you studied criminal justice, nursing, cybersecurity, or mechatronics, it makes no difference. Give yourself the best possible advantage by staying, by staying current in your chosen field. Take advantage of the fact that you still have access to your online textbooks and lectures. Don't become complacent. While your dreams will last forever, the time you have to make them a reality will not. And as you move forward in your careers, be unafraid of failure. As Henry Ford once said, failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. In closing, I'll say this, graduating college has put you all at a great advantage. Don't let this go to waste. Remember that if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Nurture your passion, never stop believing in your dreams, and absolutely never settle for good enough. I'll leave you all with one final quote. This one's by Rick Ross, who said, Every day, I'm hustling. Thank you. Representing the Moorfield Health Science campus, graduating summa cum laude with an Associates of Applied Science degree in massage therapy, Anita Thompson. Valedictorian, you know, I almost had a heart of stroke when Miss Leslie called me and said that word. I was driving my grandparents to town. I almost didn't answer the call because who answers numbers they don't know, right? I guess it's a good thing that I did. When Miss Leslie said something about doing a speech, I had to pull the car over. How in the world was I going to get up here and talk to all y'all? Why do these types of things always 
always happen to socially anxiety-filled introverts. <laughs> I guess that's what I get for being such an overachiever, right? <laughs> If you would have told me as a teenager that I was going to go to college and I would graduate within the top of my class, I would have called you a bold-faced liar. I was an average student in high school with absolutely no aspirations to go to college. I knew at 10 I was going to join the military, and I did. I served five years in the United States Marine Corps, did two tours. One each to Iraq and one to Afghanistan, which is probably the reason why I was so terrified to get up here today. Yet here I am. And why? Because of my family that is sitting right there and that cute little five-year-old boy with them. He and they are what motivated me to quit my job and follow my dreams. He and they are the reason why I am standing before you today. If there is one thing that I have learned in my life, it is that you've got to surround yourself with positive people. People that are always moving onward and upward. People that will always pick you up and support you. Try to find those people for yourself. Because no one can go through life and its struggles alone. We all need a shoulder to cry on, a person to rant to, and someone, someone to pick us up from the mud when we fall. And those are my people over there. <laughs> With that in mind, I guess I should personally thank a few of them. Nena, thank you for giving me the courage to do this, for helping me rewrite and edit papers, and for calling me a fool when I needed it the most. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mama, for watching Little Butch. Knowing that he was always in safe hands allowed me to focus on school and excel so well. And thank you, Brad, my fiance, for listening to me rant about all of this, for allowing me to torture you with all of this massage stuff while I tried to figure out what I was actually supposed to be doing, and for just being the rock that I could stand on while we started this new chapter together. Thank you, baby. Thank you all. And last but not least, representing the Emerywood campus, graduating summa cum laude with an Associates of Applied Science degree in medical assisting, Jasmine Blackwell. Well, well, the day has finally come. A sea of caps and gowns, which signify another year of pride and cheers. Good afternoon. My name is Jasmine Blackwell, and I stand before you in love to let you know that I am so proud of us all. Congratulations. We finally did it. Looking back, it's crazy how time flies. I started the first five years of my college experience wanting, uh, studying special education at a couple of different schools. After that time, it was in one of my core classes where I quickly found that I did not want to teach special education anymore. I realized that I was too overwhelmed and too indecisive about everything. So I took a break to clear my mind. I was done with trying to figure out what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be. I just was taking it one day at a time, one week at a time, one month, one year, and one job at a time. Then one day I was applying for administrative jobs and ECPI was one of the places I applied to. 
I received a call for an interview and it was there that I chose to look more closely at the programs they offered. I finally found that medical assisting would be right for me after hearing a plethora of medical stories from my younger brother who is a firefighter and my older sister who is an anesthesiologist assistant and in speaking with my wonderful advisor. Wow. One moment we're sitting in the advisor's office seeing what program is right for us. The next moment it's halfway through the year and us medical assistants are sticking classmates, friends, and family with needles, getting venipunctures and injections completed for the skills we learned as a grade. And now we're graduating, actually graduating. <laughs> Meaning we're done with all the hard stuff all the late night studying, working throughout the day or vice versa, going to class and trying to squeeze in homework there, and then starting the process all over again each day of the week while trying to maintain an actual life and get enough sleep to survive. <laughs> but once you start this routine, you eventually find out that when you're in it to win it, you make things happen. <laughs> you learn to make do with the time you have, you learn to say no to things that you realize are actually not a priority. You learn to ask questions and get help if and when you need it. You learn to just get whatever is needed done in one way or another. And you learn to love the field and the people involved in it. I mean, there isn't much choice not to if the end goal is always kept in mind and you're in some way passionate about it. Even more so, it is so crazy how so many things can change in so little time. To start, our terms are only five weeks and for some of us, our first test is basically the beginning of the second week. Our midterm is the third week there's another test about the fourth week, and then there's finals at the end of the fifth week. While there may be quizzes, homework, and projects all in between. Now, each class is different, but the huge amount of commitment needed remains the same. Also, at least for me, a lot of the people you start with are not always the people you end with for either personal reasons or other matters. But I know that out of all the people I started with, I ended with three people I know very well. Me, myself, and I. <laughs> I have learned <laughs> from experience that we must constantly endeavor if we are to succeed. Believe me, I know, from my school trials mentioned previously and my job changes as well. I have worked as a waitress, a receptionist, an administrative assistant, a sales associate, a child care assistant, in a pharmacy, as a mortgage consultant, and as a counselor for kids with autism. Even though these are good jobs, I realized they were not my niche. It may take a little longer for some than others, but the main thing is to find your niche in life Love it with all your might and never give up. So some of you graduating today, I've met throughout this ECPI journey and I've loved every bit of it, regardless of the frustrations we've had along the way, since nothing is perfect. Here at ECPI, we have stressed together, we have grown together, and for some of us in the medical field, with the help of our family and friends, we have bled together one needle at a time. <laughs> But most of all, we have learned together. Overall, I loved ECPI and can honestly say it has been very good to me and I hope you all feel the same. Thank you ECPI for teaching us what it means to help people. Thank you for teaching us patience, endurance, strength, compassion, and love for our fields. Thank you for helping me and all of us growing in our passions find our niche. As of now, I plan to continue to eventually get my bachelor's degree as an RN at ECPI, but I'm gonna miss all of my professors and friends I've already made in each class. Now, don't get me wrong. 
They may not have been the easiest classes, but they were definitely the most fun classes I've ever been in. <laughs> we're a team of helpers in the medical, technology, and business fields. So with that said, from here on out, never lose heart, my friends, because our hearts hold the love we have and need for ourselves, each other, and for our future coworkers, customers, clients, and patients. Enjoy the good and the bad because it is all what makes us grow and become stronger at what we do. Love your life, love what you do, love why you do it, love who you're doing it with, and love who you're ultimately doing it for. ECPI family, thank you for all the love and support you've given us. And ECPI class of 2018, congratulations again, and I love you all. Thank you. I think those were probably some of the most wonderfully positive valedictorian speeches we have ever heard. So thank you to all of you again, wonderful. It is my distinct honor to you today to introduce our guest speaker. But before I do, I think it's probably better to introduce the impact of our guest speaker. For example, today, when you came in, you were greeted by the courteous and kind and professional men and women of RMC events out there running the, uh, the metal detectors, the doors. Even now, we are under the watchful eye of the professional and courteous individuals who work for RMC events and are keeping an eye out for ways to be helpful at events, but also keeping an eye out for all of us, looking for threats that may be occurring, that may need to be notified. So a wonderful group of people that actually we interact with often if you live and work around Richmond. If you've attended a concert in Richmond in the last several years, if you've attended a political event in Richmond in the last several of years, if you go to the Coliseum for large events, wherever you may go and there are large crowds who need professional and courteous direction and uh, admission services, you are probably in Richmond and increasingly across the state of Virginia, you are dealing with RMC events. So it is our honor to welcome Dan Schmidt. Dan founded RMC events in April of 1999 and currently serves as the president. Since its inception, he has guided RMC events from eight to over 1,800 staff members and from 16 events in 1999 to over 9,400 events in 2017 throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. RMC Events is headquartered here in Richmond, maintains staff across the Commonwealth from the Tidewater area to Harrisonburg, down to Roanoke, Blacksburg, providing event security, ushers, ticket takers and sellers, parking attendants, traffic control and management personnel, crowd control services for events ranging from high school activities to major concerts and political events. If you've been to other graduations this past couple of weeks, you have constantly encountered RMC events. As a graduate of the University of Richmond, Dan completed industrial or industry internships and work experiences with the New York Yankees, the Richmond Renegades hockey franchise, and at the Richmond Coliseum. Upon graduation, he worked at the Richmond Coliseum as a marketing assistant before taking promotions to the event coordinator and eventually operations manager. Dan states that during these internships, he developed an understanding for the full picture of the industry and just how hard you have to work to be fully prepared on event day. He is recognized by the Department of Criminal Justice Services as a subject matter specialist instructor, has successfully completed several FEMA certifications and certification in special event risk management. Dan regularly serves as a guest speaker at the University of Richmond Business School, the VCU Center for Sports Leadership, JMU Sports Management Department, and Virginia State University's Sports Management Graduate Studies Program. Dan also serves, or has served, recently served, on numerous boards and commissions, including Private Security Services Advisory Board as the chairman, Capital Region Airport Commission, representing Henrico County, 
the Glen Allen Youth Athletic Board of Directors as president, the Virginia Association of Fairs Board of Directors as associate director, and the Virginia High School League Foundation Board of Directors. In May of 2017, Dan was named Henrico County Community Leader of the Year by Chamber RVA and Henrico County Business Council. Dan was also a finalist for the Ernst & Young Virginia Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2003. With these accolades, it is a distinct honor of ECPI University to welcome Dan Schmidt, founder and president of RMC Events, as the 2018 ECPI University Richmond Campus graduation guest speaker. Thank you, Matthew. And be before I begin, um, Jasmine, Chad, unbelievably inspirational stories. Um, Anita, Preston, thank you for your service. And Cassie, wow. Um, I've seen and heard many national anthems right here in this arena, and wow. So congratulations, you guys are spectacular, thank you. <laughs> Graduates, good afternoon, congratulations. You seem very excited today, you should be. Today is a signature day, marking the culmination of your hard work, determination, and resilience. Today also marks the launch of a new day, a new era for you, and it carries with it much hope, excitement, and potential. Today, you've earned your way here, and for that, you deserve all the respect and congratulatory messages you will receive. Later tonight, when today's celebratory exercises and graduation parties come to a close, you may find yourself thinking about tomorrow and that roller coaster ride. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Beginning tomorrow, you'll embark upon new endeavors. You'll encounter new challenges. You'll face new adversities. You'll realize new heights of achievement. You'll arrive at intersections where your decisions will chart your course for years to come. You will at times identify opportunities worth chasing. Your passion and determination will drive you towards capturing these moments and seizing these opportunities. You will also at times stop and pause. You will trust your instincts when they alert you that it may be time to reevaluate, make an adjustment, and proceed in a new direction. Much, if not all, that you accomplish beginning tomorrow will be shaped by what I consider to be your three principles of success. These three pillars have significant impact in both your personal and professional worlds. They form the core of your thoughts, your actions, and your decision making. In your professional future, each of these three items will be used to fairly evaluate your accomplishments, your aptitude, and your potential for success. The first of these three principles is your knowledge and your skill level. Evidenced by here today, you have already invested both your time and energy into strengthening your core in this regard. I congratulate you on that. When seeking a position or a promotion, you will be fairly judged by this critical component. This should come as no surprise to you as it is common practice in every industry, every corner of the world, every day. Whether you realize it or not, you have increased your knowledge and skill level incrementally since preschool. And again, you've placed a stone in that foundation here today. Please do not consider that stone to be your capstone. For today does not mark the end of your knowledge growth. For today does not signify the end of your learning and skill development process. It is incumbent upon you, beginning tomorrow, to continually embrace the opportunities you encounter to learn, to grow, to develop, both personally and professionally. In keeping this first principle of knowledge and skill in mind, be proud of what you have done and accomplished. Recognize the need for, for continual growth and never settle for the status quo. After this first principle component of knowledge and skill, you'll be judged again fairly upon your historical background and for lack of a better term, your track record. Regardless of whether you have extensive experience in a particular field, the entire perspective of your past action actionable items are and will be utilized to measure the potential for you to succeed in a particular new setting. This, similar to the evaluation of your knowledge and skill level, is remarkably fair. 
I dare say that each of you in this arena have demonstrated the capabilities and potential that you have in a variety of settings and circumstances. This may have been demonstrated in the workplace, certainly, but your complete experience package is so much more than that. It can shine brightly through meaningful involvement and service to your community. It may be demonstrated through a more personal story involving your dedication to a family member or a situation that has required your full commitment. These types of experience items over time paint a picture of not just the what that you have accomplished, but more importantly, it fills the gap on the who you are. This leads us directly to our third pillar of success, and in my opinion, the most critical, as it time and time again serves as a differentiating factor for you in your future, again, both personally and professionally. You see, for us to achieve well-rounded success, we must stand firmly behind each of these first two core principles of knowledge, skill, past experiences, and achievements. However, what truly defines us and what truly defines you and makes you unique cannot simply be found within our skill level or our past experiences. Consider the fact that others may have similar sets of knowledge and similar sets of skill. They may have similar past experiences. This marks my challenge to you. I challenge you beginning tomorrow to identify exactly the who that is behind this degree. To find exactly the who stands behind your knowledge, your skill, your experiences, and your historical perspective. I challenge you to determine your core, your center, exactly what makes you unique. Clearly identify your passions, your motivations, your leadership characteristics, for they are all unique to you. Now, it would be very easy for me to simply say that and leave you to figure out the details but that wouldn't be anything close to resembling the who that I am. The good news is this, you will not have to go searching for this third tool in a textbook. No, there will be no library or online research required. Most certainly you will not have to write a paper or complete a project to place this final tool in your portfolio. You see, here's the real truth. The organization with which I'm privileged to lead has two, nearly 2,000 employees all right here in the Commonwealth. Each of these fine folks are different, and each of their skill sets lends benefits to the whole. They each have unique experiences, and they come from a diverse educational set of backgrounds. But what is it about the great ones that closes the loop? What's the intangible that separates good from great? It's this third piece of the trifecta. It's character, it's integrity, it's passion, it's dedication, it's leadership. It's the who they have decided to be. It's the personal commitment to their brand. Yes, I said their brand. Let's pause for a second, and I'd ask that you take a second here and list to yourself three brands that stand out in your mind, three brands that you deal with daily. Go ahead, take a second, and think to yourself three brands that are on the top of your head. If you'd like to share one with your neighbor, please do so. My guess is that many of your choices will be the same. I'll give you a few easy ones that may have come to mind before revealing the usual winner. Apple, Lexus, Under Armour, Disney, Coke. And here you go, for those who wish to have won this, this, uh, this challenge that you might have shared, Nike. It's usually the first one on your mind. Why do these brands and names come to mind? Well, it's branding. It's product branding. It is their effort and energy, and yes, dollars, they put towards branding. You see, branding is defined as creating an image and or optics of what you would like for people to judge or perceive a product or service to be. A lot of time and money is spent creating these optics in your mind. So I'd argue that the same energy and effort, thank goodness no dollars need to be spent, should be spent here on your personal brand. This is the third key to the trifecta for success for you. I promise you this, every single job candidate, every single one, is vetted on their experience and their education, some weighted in different ways. However, after the resume review comes the interview. In this moment, in this opportunity, it is your personal brand that is being evaluated. It will be evaluated every day, both personally and professionally. Please don't for a minute think this is just about interviewing. It's about promotions, it's about relationships, it's about opportunities and partnerships in your personal world. You see, personal branding is simply creating an image and or optics of what you like people to judge or perceive you to be. 
I encourage you to identify that personal brand. I'd offer that at some point each of us, myself very much included, may have found yourself in a mall or out for the day, and you've formulated an opinion or a judgment upon someone in which you have never met. I dare say that you or I may have judged them on the way they walk, the way they talk, what they wear, what they drive. While I mentioned earlier that judgments upon your knowledge, skill, and experiences are fair and just, this type of judgment upon character without fully understanding exactly who that person is is incredibly unfair, yet it is human nature. And the real eye-opener is this. Fair or unfair, each of us are being judged every day, all of us. Every day we stand to be judged by our coworkers, our supervisors, our subordinates, our peers, complete strangers, and yes, even your family. Well, effective tomorrow, no longer do you have to simply accept that fact. Part of my challenge to you in identifying your personal brand is to embrace it, own it. It is your intangible. It is your brand and it makes you who you are. You are now the product of your decisions. You are in control of your attitude and approach. You get to decide where to place the focus of your energy and you get to set the bar for evaluation by the standards of which you set for yourself. Here are a few basic facts to consider about who you are and your brand. First, understand that average is easy. To be above average, you simply need to do one of two things. Simply do what others are willing to do, just do it better. Or number two, do what others are not willing to do. Otherwise, you're average. Choose to be better, choose to be great. Second, be a collaborator. Form connection points with people. People are the key to your success. People do not follow silo builders. People follow collaborators. Next, be a winner, not a whiner. Doors do not open for whiners and naysayers. Doors, windows, and opportunities fly wide open for problem solvers and solution-minded individuals. Next, speak well of others. Choose the high road. Winston Churchill said it best when he said, quote, never does a man portray his character more vividly than his proclaiming the character of another. Celebrate achievements of others. Realize that life is not a zero-sum game. Lastly, in this very building a few months ago, a man who I consider to be remarkably inspirational said the following. He said, I choose to be a consistent leader. I avoid being a circumstantial or situational leader. I make efforts to be the same person on Wednesday night in the grocery store as you see on Sunday in church. I choose to be consistent. That man is currently the third base coach for the Texas Rangers and his name is Tony Beasley. Tony was forced to leave the game of baseball in 2016 after a cancer diagnosis. His positive and relentless attitude carried him to beat the disease, and he's back on the field today. Be a consistent leader. I will leave you with this as a guiding light to the third critical principle for your success. I ask that you both set and raise the bar for which you are willing to be judged. There's another company out there that I did not mention earlier, along with Apple, Lexus, Disney, Under Armour, Coke, and Nike, that many of you might have considered. I wonder if you all heard of a little company that delivers packages. It's a small organization. It's called FedEx. You probably heard of it. Well, their founder, chairman, president, and CEO is Fred Smith. Fred Smith is a man who battled bone disease as a small boy, was commissioned into the United States Marine Corps after graduating Yale. He was honorably discharged with the rank of captain after receiving both the silver and the bronze star and two Purple Hearts. He went on to found FedEx and is currently considered among the 50, 50th greatest leaders in the world, according to Fortune. Well, let me leave you with what Fred said. It still resonates with me today, and I hope it does with you as well. He said, leaders get out front, and they stay there by raising the standards by which they judge themselves and by which they are willing to be judged. My favorite part, that leaders get out front, but they stay there. Your understanding and application of your personal brand will keep you there. I again congratulate each and every one of you on your accomplishments here today and for the strength of the existing two components within your arsenal, your knowledge and your experience. I again challenge and encourage you to identify what makes you great. Embrace it. 
consistently apply it. Get out front and stay there by both setting and raising the bar of your expectations of yourself. Start tomorrow and be great. Thank you. the colleges of technology, business, and criminal justice, it's my honor to be able to introduce the graduates. Graduating with a Master of Science in Cybersecurity, Cyber Operations, Preston Carter, summa cum laude. Chad Spengler, summa cum laude. Anita Thompson, summa cum laude. Jasmine Blackwell, Associate of Applied Science and Medical Assisting, summa cum laude. Graduating with, with an Associate of Science in Computer and Information Science Concentration, Cyber Network Security, Anthony Danridge. Shatora Everett. Tabitha Gill. Jonathan Hanning. Skylin Harper, Dwayne Hicks, Jeffrey Jenkins, Jarrell Jones, Sean Lucas, Kanika McQueen Liggins, summa cum laude. Jeffrey Ramirez, magna cum laude. Unique Talbert. Corey Taylor. Maya Towers. Memphis Williams. Graduating with an Associates of Science in Computer and Information Science, Concentration in Software Development, Brittany Stevenson. Sean Bradley Sr. Patrick Carr Cum Laude. Christopher Davis. Jonathan Alderston. What is it? What's your name? Kamar Lee. William Menzies. Jamil Saeed. Graduating with a Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration, Concentration in Accounting, Alexander Gad. Brandon Johnson. Marty Little. Jennifer Castillo. 
Billy Moore. Zachary Oliveri. Stuart Pillow. Graduating with a Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration, Concentration in IT Management, Danielle Jackson, summa cum laude. Rose Moore, summa cum laude. Graduating with a Bachelor's of Science in Computer and Information Science, Concentration in Cyber and Network Security, Ashley Bailey. Andrew Barefoot, cum laude. Eugene Barfield. Brandon Bass. Mark Belcher. Brian Burchett. Thornton Caudill. Jeremy Collins, sum cum laude. Derek Edwards, magna cum laude. Tracy Evans. Christopher Gennard, magna cum laude. Raymond Giroux. Sumitra Glass. Aaron Godin, summa cum laude. What's your name? Travis Granger. Nardine Hanna. How do you say it? Jeffrey Iden. Tanache Madava, magna cum laude. Eric Maddox, Jr. Andrew Mertstig. Roman Motes. Mona Patel, summa cum laude. Carlos Rodriguez. Anthony Rotini, summa cum laude. James Sturdivant Sr., summa cum laude. Anthony Thomas. Bruce Waller. Jason Zorn. Francisco Hurtado. Graduating with a Bachelor's of Science in Computer and Information Science, Concentration, Software Development, Vanessa Adens. Estefani Andrade. Russell Bricky. Justin Colley. Jordan Mellon. Joshua Vaughn. Graduating with a Bachelor's of Science in Computer and Information Science, Concentration Mobile Development, Rishi Dalla. Luke Harris. Joshua Page. Christina Gold. Graduating with a Bachelor's of Science in Computer and Information Science, Concentration Software Development, WebTrack. 
Kahim Adakari, magna cum laude. Scott Hackenberg, magna cum laude. Shaylee Hahn. Tarellis Howard. Austin LaBelle. Robert Little. How do you say that? Fifi, Fifi McKimshi. Arthur Wynn, summa cum laude. Christopher Odin, summa cum laude. Graduating with the Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice, Ryan Autry. Jessica Brickhouse. Dylan Hicks. Abigail Johnson, summa cum laude. Gregory Johnson. Ty Kitchen, cum laude. Vincent Kuzminski. Marcos Martinez. Celeste Miha, summa cum laude. Jonathan Morales. Brandon Powell. Omar Saleem. Bryce Stidham. Tanira Wilkes, cum laude. Christina Young. Graduating with a bachelor's in electronic engineering, Joseph Andares, magna cum laude. Michael Brown. Joshua Castleberry. D'Artagnan DeRus, decree. Matthew Engels. Rayvon Gordon. Keith Johnson. Wilson Lopez. Alan Mashburn. Dwayne Menard, magna cum laude. James Rose. Wilson Tan. Charles Williams. Nicholas Williams. Graduating with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Electronic Engineering, Concentration Mechatronics, Michael Akins. Michael Bordeaux, summa cum laude. Kyle Cuthrill. James Garrigan, magna cum laude. Joshua Graziano. Herman Hamilton. Matthew Haymaker. James Irwin. Graduating with a Master's of Business Administration, Brianna Covington, magna cum laude. Bradley Marlowe, summa cum laude. 
graduating with a Master of Science in Cybersecurity Concentrations in Cyber Operations, Terrace Bonneau. Timothy Cole, summa cum laude. Kim Myers, magna cum laude. Jacob Pope III. Kelly Royster, summa cum laude. Good afternoon. My name is Benjamin Shorb, and today is my great honor to read the names of the graduates of our health science programs. First, graduating with a diploma in practical nursing. Thank you much. Mariah Kane. Nicholas Edwards. Faith Gibbs. Kadrea Goodall. Shervante Hicks. Jeanette Moore. <laughs> Brittany Shelton. Jessica Shelton. India Smith. Kayla Taylor. Marissa Turner. Stacy Vaughn. Graduating with an Associate of Applied Science in Health Science with a concentration on dental assisting, Nicole Baglevy. Kiana Jones. <laughs> Jocelyn McLaren. Aaron Parham. Holly Potteraki. <laughs> Zaria Smith Taylor. Stephanie Stone, cum laude. Kiana Thomas. Ali Kiante Wigfall. Aneta Zaimova. Kata Ziljic. Graduating with an Associate Applied Science in Health Science with a concentration in Physical Therapy Assistant, Jamie Appleman, cum laude. <laughs> Summer Ashton. <laughs> Irina Bell, summa cum laude. Taylor Clark. <laughs> Sean Ellis. <laughs> Jessica Staples. Miranda Marshall. Matthew Newton. Tiasia Procise. Takesha Williams. Associate Appli Graduate in Associate Applied Science in Health Science with concentration in Medical Assisting, Deanna Johnson. Anderson, Deanna Anderson. Jordan Anderson. Kara Arnold. Tiffany Beach. Erica Brown. Jamie Brown. Kalia Carrington. <laughs> Bailey Crook. Ricky Davenport. Bailey or more? 
Haley Davis. Erica DeVore. Kerry Dunson, cum laude. Maria Evina. Eliza Fincham. Karen Fleming. Brittany Goidich. Tashina Hawkins. Christopher B. Green. Arlene Grimsley, summa cum laude. Chelsea Harris, cum laude. Marissa Harada. Jennifer Hernandez. Susan Hurdum, summa cum laude. Karen Jarrett. Tynesha Jefferson. Tiana Johnson. Tristan Jones. Sarah Kemp. Eli Kleiner. Kenya Leftridge. Alyssa Levy. Christopher Levy. Tanise Lewis. Deepak Manger. Yuliza Martinez. Cassidy McAdams. Katie McCann. Melissa Medina. Patricia Minor. <laughs> Jessica Mount, magna cum laude. Javante Miles. Katie Osorio. Charday Parker. Shelly Parmeli Lawrence, summa cum laude. Melissa Pearson. Maisha Reed. Nicholas Rico Ruiz. Deja Rivers. Megan Robertson. Randy Singleton. Corey Smith. Cherise Stanton. Kinsley Stroud. Ariel Tab. Brittany Carter. Connie Thull, magna cum laude. Tarika Tompkins. Melissa Velazquez. Alexis Wiseman. 
graduating with an Associate of Applied Science in Health Science with a concentration in Health Information Management, Trista Miles. Sharon Murphy Dowd, cum laude. Annette Stokes. Graduating with an Associate of Applied Science and Health Science with a concentration in Registered Nursing, Wendy Allen. Adriana Baker. Jocelyn Cruz. Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Tigist Jamal. John K. Jones. Anastasia McFarlane. Fungi Nube. Kudakwash Whitaker. <clears throat> Graduating with an Associate of Applied Science and Health Science with a concentration in Surgical Technology, Susan Archer, summa cum laude. Holly Baker. Todd Biondolilo. Tennessee Bray. <laughs> Natasha Clark. Shannon Rose Farlow. Shauna Feaster, magna cum laude. Johanna Flores, cum laude. Sherry Fox, summa cum laude. Samantha Hart, summa cum laude. Georgia Jordan. Danielle Maring, cum laude. Dawn Mays. Brittany Nicky. Sanjia Montiera. Natalie Pacas, cum laude. Aubrey Smith. Cum laude. Tivon Tucker. Brandy Wood. Graduating with an Associate of Applied Science in Health Science with a concentration in Massage Therapy, Tammy Adams. Jennifer Phillips. Graduating with the Associate of Applied Science and Health Science with a concentration in Diagnostic Medical Sonography, Skylar Kosabun, magna cum laude. Holly Ho, cum laude. Rachel Johnson. Courtney Locke, cum laude. Ashley Meyer. <laughs> Lindsay Pitts. Mackenzie Struder. Crystal Taylor. Leah Vaughn. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Healthcare Administration, Justin Brown. Tyler Caldwell. 
Tamiga Coleman. Farad Holman. Sharon Jones. I know. Lisa Krakowiak. Ryan McCutcheon. Sable Nellis. Amber Null. <laughs> Teresa Parks. Nicole Pride. Jasula Roy. Chantel Vereen. And Regina Williams. So now, the moment I think you've all been waiting for, graduates, please rise. Graduates, in the presence of your faculty, staff, administration, our esteemed guests, and most importantly, your family and friends, as a representative of ECPI University, and therefore with authority given to me from the State Council of Higher Education for Virginia, and our accreditor, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, Commission on Colleges, I am excited to be able to introduce you for the very first time as ECPI University's graduating class of 2018. Graduates, move your tassels. Graduates, please remain standing. We ask as we depart this occasion for wisdom and guidance to be upon our graduates as they and their families celebrate this grand milestone and the fruits of their achievements. May they keep their face toward the sunshine so that the shadows will fall behind them. May they find strength in the excellence of their academic preparation and the half century of ECPI University educational tradition. For with it today, they join a network of net local, national, and global alumni who are their companions striving for excellence in their careers. Graduates, not I, nor anyone else has traveled this road for you. You have traveled it yourself. It was never far, it was always within your reach, and today we celebrate your journey of reaching this milestone as you stride with confidence on the path ahead. Stay true to your dreams, discern what is right, good, and just, and use your gifts wisely and in service to others.